Some of the most cutting-edge ways to fire powerful projectiles a long way are rail guns. They've been described as threatening future weapon systems because of their high muzzle velocity. But the American Navy recently put the technology study on hold. Why? Welcome back to Military Knowledge, your favorite channel to know more about the military and their stories from around the world. By the end of this video, you'll learn something about the interesting facts about railguns and what is happening to them now. Before we start this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. So what exactly are railguns? Instead of using chemical energy, railguns employ electricity to accelerate projectiles over 100 miles at hypersonic speeds. The US Navy is now evaluating the first functional railguns to complement more traditional naval artillery pieces. Railgun projectiles are just projectiles as opposed to modern artillery rounds. They don't carry explosives, but the projectile's kinetic energy, which travels at almost seven times the speed of sound, can rip through steel or concrete and demolish anything in its path. How do these railguns work? Magnetic fields and electrical current interact to produce rail guns. The projectile is a copper wire resting on top of its rails, two bare copper wires connected to a DC source. As a result, electrical current passes through the projectile, completing the electrical circuit. The magnetic field is produced by electricity passing through the rails, as seen in the blue illustration. The net magnetic field is produced by the parallel to the page's plane. Now let's talk about military rail guns. The inexpensive cost of the projectiles is one of the main benefits of military railguns. Since they are electrically powered, they do not include any internal propellant. In addition, they don't require an explosive charge because the damage is caused by the kinetic energy of a projectile moving at seven times the speed of sound. Safety is another perk. There is also no explosive propellant or explosion in these missiles. Thus, a significant risk is diminished. The projectiles fired by the gadgets currently under development are accelerated with a force that is astonishingly 30,000 times greater than the force of gravity. The projectiles must be made precisely, but their cost will be a minuscule fraction of the hostile missiles they will use to intercept. They could someday replace traditional gunpowder accelerated artillery projectiles due to a range of over 100 kilometers. The US Navy was planning to test its railgun at sea aboard a warship in 2019 for the first time. The US Navy is considering conducting a railgun test on a warship, which would be a significant accomplishment for the sluggish program. The Navy's railgun was supposed to be tested in 2016, however that date was postponed. The railgun results from more than 10 years of development and more than $500 million. Not just the US is interested in this technology either. A railgun has already been installed in a Chinese warship and the Type 072 III Yuting class tank landing ship Haiyang Shan. According to newly released documents outlining the US Navy's testing and training plans, the military intends to finally test the electromagnetic railgun that it has spent years and hundreds of millions of dollars building aboard a vessel. We are delighted that you're still intrigued by this video. Stay until the end to find out more about what happened with these railguns. If you're an admirer of such content, then please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. Let's go on with the video. In contrast to traditional firearms, a railgun fires projectiles farther and at a six to seven times speed of sound using electromagnetic energy rather than explosive charges. The Navy's 1800-page Northwest Training and Testing Draft Supplemental Environmental Impact Assessment stated that explosive and non-explosive projectiles would be fired at airborne or maritime targets while testing the kinetic energy weapon, also known as the railgun. The Navy had initially planned to test this new weapon at sea aboard the Spearhead class expeditionary fast transport vehicle USNS Trenton at the Maritime Test Range at Eglin Air Force Base in the summer of 2016. However, the Navy has spent over a decade and at least $500 million trying to build a working railgun. That test was never conducted. The Navy has decided to keep testing the weapon on land. Sea trials for the railgun could start next year if the Navy's new testing and training plans are approved. What kind of test platform might be utilized is unknown. It will be a significant accomplishment for a program that has been struggling for a while if the Navy tests its railgun at sea. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral John Richardson's best response to a question about the program earlier this year was, it's going somewhere, hopefully. The race is on, but how far along the Chinese railgun program is needs to be clarified. China's naval electromagnetic weapon and equipment have overtaken other countries and become a world leader, the Chinese media said with pride in January. According to certain naval affairs specialists, the railgun is an odd weapon that delivers prestige to the inventor but little in the way of military benefit to the combatant, regardless of who gets their hands on it first. The hypervelocity projectile, which the Navy tested using the Mark 45 5-inch deck guns that are standard on cruisers and destroyers, is now the most fantastic thing from the US Navy's railgun research. 
How can railgun technology change naval warfare? Target acquisition would be made more of a priority with a railgun. While a missile can be fired roughly where the target is located and let its terminal guidance zero in on it, a railgun round must be fired precisely where the target is or the target must be marked with a laser. Combat logistics may experience little stress thanks to railguns. Compared to missiles, a naval vessel can carry far more railgun rounds. In addition, it is more practical to undertake a railgun ammunition replenishment at sea. The ship's design may alter slightly. Addressing secondary explosions from ordnance requires less focus. Railgun rounds lack fuel and are far less sensitive than missiles. In addition, lowering the ammunition in the hull might reduce the center of gravity and improve ship stability. After more than 10 years of research and development, the Navy is abandoning its electromagnetic railgun, which utilizes electric to propel projectiles up to seven times faster than the speed of sound. The service eliminated money for railgun research in its most recent budget proposal, despite once employing the advanced armament on brand new Zumwalt class destroyers. The Navy chose to halt the research and development of the Electromagnetic Railgun, or EMRG, at the end of 2021 due to financial restrictions, problems integrating combat systems, and the expected technological maturation of alternative weapon ideas, she said in a statement. According to Brian Clark, an analyst at the Hudson Institute, the Navy invested around $500 million over more than 10 years in the research and development of the railgun. The Pentagon is making this step to concentrate on hypersonic missiles to keep up with China and Russia. In addition, the Navy has spent so much time perfecting a railgun, a technology that has just been developed to the prototype stage. If the technology could be used, it would be much less expensive than utilizing bombs and missiles. However, during testing, the Navy could not make the railgun shoot farther than 110 miles, which meant that the Navy ship could not employ the weapon without putting itself in the path of an enemy missile. And due to the enormous electric current and magnetic forces required for the gun to function, it is also unknown if it could maintain its structural integrity after a few shots. The HVP is made to fit into the 127mm deck guns the US Navy uses. The projectile's top speed from a chemical energy gun is Mark III, which is slower than it would be from the EMRG, but still faster than current 127mm projectiles. The Navy thinks that long-range strike operations against terrestrial targets, air and missile defense, and enemy vessels may all be accomplished with the HPV. During the 2018 RIMPAC naval drills, the guided missile destroyer USS Dewey launched 20 HVP missiles, marking the first known use of the new weapon's use at sea. There are now more than 100 HVP launchers in use, which gives it a significant advantage over the railgun. There are about 120 marks in the Navy. There are 45 active guns, two aboard each cruiser and destroyer of the Ticonderoga class, and one on each of the Arleigh Burke class. It will be much less expensive to deploy HVP to the fleet than construct brand new ships equipped with railguns, giving these ships more outstanding capabilities. The two advanced gun systems on the destroyers in the Zumwalt class have the ammo to engage the enemy objectives because the technology is available for larger 155mm rounds. The Ticonderoga class cruisers are expected to be eventually replaced by a new vessel called the Large Surface Combatant. In the late 2020s, the Navy intends to purchase the first of these ships. The Navy is keeping quiet regarding the new technologies that will be installed on the massive surface combatant. We hope you learned some interesting things about military railguns. If you've enjoyed this video, then subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Furthermore, if you have anything to say or even recommendations, please tell us down in the comment section below. Check out other videos on our playlist and we'll see you in the next video.